What is up guys, it is Misho here today. I got you guys a Subterra deck profile. Um, it's, it is still pre uh, circuit break. Um, honestly, the support in circuit break doesn't really do anything for you. Really, you can just take out a deco talker for the Subterra link monster because uh, truth, like, truth be told, you're not really gonna go into deco talker. And um, the Subterra link monster, you're not really gonna go into it as much as well. But you know, it's better to have here than, you know, some something that you're not going to use as much you know just because uh it just has a way better effect for the deck itself um but honestly you don't need to care about that honestly so let's just get into it um so starting off we have our behemoths we have uh our two behemoth uh stalgmo so uh he's the draw power uh, you play to him, honestly, he's a sub behemoth that you play the most of because the other ones that you play are only one up. So you, you play one of Umastrix, uh, when he's flipped up, you banish your opponent's monsters. Uh, Stygo Kraken pops face down, uh, face down card, like any set card, equal to the number of uh, sub behemoths you control, uh, face up sub behemoths. Now, obviously, he's always going to count himself, so you always be able to destroy at least one, but, um, you know, if you control more than one on the field at a time, then uh, he can pop multiple. And Phosphor Glacier, he's like your combo starter. He mills stuff like uh, Zephyros or Globe Bulb. So, you know, um, he's just real solid in the deck. And when Destrudel comes out, actually, um, Circuit Break, um, he, he'll actually be a lot stronger for the deck because Destrudel will be able to make, to, to let this deck make a lot um, more synchros like Ancient Fairy. So moving on, we have our nemesis, uh, two nemesis warrior and one archer. Now I know some people don't like archer, some people don't play her at all. I just play her just because when she destroys, she searches any um, sub terra monster from the deck. Um, you can summon it face down if you want. So uh, it's pretty good for like just digging into your deck and getting those sub terra monsters. Um, Nemesis Warrior also does dig into your deck as well, but he requires you to have another monster and that monster to have a level and then you have to tribute him and that other monster to um, really get him to dig into your deck. So that's why I think he's just okay at two. Um, and also he does bring himself back when one when, when of your behemoth monsters is flipped. So if you're like looping um, Umastrix, right, because to like banish monsters your opponent controls, um, ne Nemesis Warrior can like come back and like uh, you know like just keep coming back. Maybe use him for Link Monsters, Synchros, uh, whatever you need. Honestly, he can also be a combo starter, but you know again you would need another monster on board. Nemesis Warrior, I mean Nemesis Archer, just needs herself to be destroyed, and she gets you any sub terror you want. So next we have a few miscellaneous cards. Um, as I did mention earlier, Phosphor Glacier, these are going to be your two mil, two mil targets because Zephyros, um, he adds back your Hidden City to the hand, and then he's also a level 4 monster himself, so if you have Nemesis Warrior on board, you can either overlay or tribute both of them to go into rank 4s. And Glow Up Bulb is also a nice um, addition because you can make Synchros, you can make a uh, Naturia Beast, or you can use it for Mrs. Radiant. So it is a pretty solid option in the deck. Uh, and lastly, we for the monster lineup, we have our hand traps being triple sub terra Phoenix and um, double ghost ogre and a singular maxi. So these kind of go without explanation. So, you know, uh, hand traps are, are always going to be good. And, you know, uh, ghost ogre is amazing in this format. Maxi does. Um, it is a little... Uh, Saki, but it does keep certain decks in check when you know you you activate it for the turn uh so phoenix uh she's probably like the best sub terra monster she's probably the reason why sub terrors are playable in general because what she does is that um when she's on the field you put any sub terra monster you, you uh you want face down and then you sub terror you summon a sub terror from your hand or your graveyard you have the option summon it from your hand or graveyard and then um in face up or face down defense position so you can either just put it straight face down and like skip stuff like bottomless and all and all this and that. Or um, you can, you know, put it face up and use it for like link monsters or something. And so she can use any monster. So she can set any monster you control, like including herself, 
Um, it doesn't have to be a sub-terror. It doesn't have to be any of that. Like, literally any monster on the field. Well, on your side of the field, you can set it. Uh, secondly, uh, while she's on the hand or field, uh, you send her to the grave and then set another sub monster you control to negate the activation of a spell, trap, or monster effect. Or, or, or like, card or effect in general. So, uh, it does pretty well in, like, stopping um, anything from, you know, like, uh, literally anything, <laughs> you know. Uh, anything in the meta you can think of, Fiendus can probably stop it. Um, like, from Wind Witches to Invoke to uh, ABC uh, to, like, Union Hanger. Unfortunately, she doesn't destroy the card that she negates. So, um, there can be situations where uh, you have her on board or you have her in hand and you negate something like a union hanger you, you negate the searching but you know they can still equip their their union monsters from the deck so um she's pretty good um and she's a searchable hand trap and she brings back your sub terror behemoths you can loop her real nicely with uh, one of the spell cards in the deck so she's not a bad addition to the deck uh and she's definitely as i said before the reason why sub terror are playable but you know she does have her flaws as well so that is all for the monsters. Moving on to the spells, we have not two, but three Hidden City. Hidden City, uh, when it's activated, you uh, have the option to search a sub terror monster. You don't have to. So that means that if you don't have one, you can still activate the Hidden City, which is, you know, <laughs> uh, makes it not uh, pretty good because, um, you know, for stuff like set rotation where, uh, you know, like a lot of people are playing it because Gateway to Chaos is a card where you have to add a Gaia Knight or BLS Ritual. Um, Hidden City is a card that just says, you know, you can add. So, um, yeah, it, it's just good in that regard. And so, um, once per turn, you can flip um, a sub monster that's face down to face up so that uh, they can get their effects. So, uh, you know, uh, even the turn that they're summoned. So that's why first turn was something like a sub Fiendus. Venus would summon the monster, um, like she would set herself, and then she she would summon a subterra behemoth face down. So you have that option to like flip up that subterra behemoth, and then use its effect. If it's something like a Stogmo, um, you'll get to draw cards first turn. If it's something like a Umastrix, you will get to banish. Or if it's something like a Phosphor Glacier, you'll get to mill cards immediately and uh, start to set up um, your combos. Um, also, uh, once per turn during your opponent's battle phase, you can negate an attack by flipping up a sub terror monster, which is actually real solid. So, um, you know, there are going to be times where, uh, like, as again, I said, like with that Fiendus situation where you just have Fiendus and the other sub terror behemoth, and like maybe it's something that wasn't really too useful because these were the only two sub terrors that you had. So maybe you would want to uh, flip up Fiendus and, you know, keep, like, um, Stogmo in defense mode, right? So, and then your opponent's turn comes. Fiendus, uh, if, when your opponent tries to activate something, Fiendus would just uh, ch tribute herself, set this, and then negate the attack. I mean, not, not negate the attack, negate the effect of uh, whatever they try to activate. And then uh, when they try to attack, Hidden City can just flip up. Uh, your Stogmo, and then you can negate that attack as well. It works better with something like uh, Umastrix, because Umastrix can banish your opponent's monsters, so it's kind of like a punishment for them attacking, uh, since, like, and it, it applies when they attack any monster as well, so if they attack and you have an Umastrix face down, you flip up this Umastrix, you're like, okay, no attack, your monster gets banished, and, uh, you know, you, you, just, you just feel real good in those type of situations, so... Yeah, Hidden City is a pretty solid card for this deck, and uh, it's pretty cool how it works. So double terraforming for searching, and your double instant fusion disses to go into the invoked um, level 5 fusion. Um, I don't actually have a copy of it, but um, it does uh, flip itself face down, and so that does two things for you. One, um, because it's face down, it isn't destroyed by instant fusion at the end of its turn, so... Um, you know, it gets to stay on board as a 24 uh, defender until your next turn where you get to flip it up. And also, um, your behemoths, they get to summon themselves from hand when monsters you control are flipped face down. 
So um, not only do you get a, a free uh, fusion monster, but you also get to summon one of your behemoths from your hand. So it kind of declogs your hand a bit. That's why I like it a lot. Next, we have Subterror Cave Clash. Subterror Cave Clash uh, does where uh, it's a continuous spell card where all Subterror monsters you control gain 500 attack and defense for each set monster on the field. Unfortunately, it's not each set card. I think that would be a little too broken. But at the same time, um, I think if they would have just lowered the attack each one gained for each set card, I think this would have been that would have been a good option as well. But unfortunately, it only applies to monsters. But the reason you use it is that once per turn, when a subterra monster you control inflicts battle damage to your opponent, you can target one subterra card in your graveyard and then add it back to your hand. So that includes any of the spell or trap cards. It doesn't include a hidden city, but it does include uh, Phoenix, which is why I said you can loop her. Because, you know, if you have the um, the option to, to not only, like, just, like, uh, attack, but to inflict damage. So, even if it's uh, directly or, like, hitting over an attack position monster, you would be able to get back some of your sub terror monsters. So, you play one for one, because Phoenix is actually real important. And if you drop one of your behemoths, you can just summon it from Grave anyway. Uh, soul charge for just bringing back all your behemoths at once. Uh, reasoning because sometimes even I forget the level of some of these sub terrors. So <laughs> if my opponent calls it wrong, I just get a free monster. You know, uh, you don't have to play reasoning, but I just like it. You know, just to get into your monsters a little quicker. Dark hole. Uh, I don't know if you can see it. Uh, this one is like shatter foil. Yeah, you can probably see it like that, yep. And then, Book of Moon. Uh, Book of Moon is, like, one of those, like... Uh, it, it's just... It, it's more of, like, if you, you... You're probably gonna use it on your opponent's monster, but it's, like, if you can, you can use it on your own monster just to set it down and then uh, have it so that you can summon one of your behemoths from your hand. So, next off, going into trap cards, we have... Double Subterra Final Battle. Um, this is something that you can actually play three of. Um, it's a real solid card. Honestly, I haven't seen this card enough in my playtesting. Like, I only drew into it, like, once or twice. And, you know, it's like I only got it when, you know, I was already winning anyway. So, it's like it didn't really do much for me. But, it, like, it has one of four effects where you get to either uh, set Subterra Monsters um, or flip up Subterra Monsters. Uh, add up the attack and defense of subterra monsters and it's like they it becomes like its total attack and defense like each like both of their attack and defense become the total and then last one is that you can have it so that no subterra cards this turn can be negated um, so it's actually real solid and although it isn't searchable I think well technically if you phosphor glacier it and then use the uh, the spell card uh, cave clash to add back to add it back, then you can do that, but um, I don't think that's, uh, you know, you'd rather use Phosphor Glacier on your actual combo pieces, so that might not be too good, but it does um, recycle itself, so like after you use it, it just sets itself face down, so you get to use it again the next turn and, you know, every turn from that, from that point on. Also, it has no once per turn on the card, so if you have multiples, then you get to use both of them in the same turn if they're both set. So that's pretty solid. Next off, we have double back to the front. You get to summon out your subterra behemoths or even stuff like Nemesis Warrior um, from your grave in defense mode, pretty much for free. And, you know, definitely isn't a bad option. If you have something like a Phoenix in your hand and you summon out a behemoth in defense mode, Phoenix would set that monster and then uh, you would be able to negate something. So um, it's actually pretty good in that regard. And sub terrors can also, during your turn, they can flip themselves uh, back face down. So if you activate this during your opponent's end phase, your turn, you go, you set the sub terror monster, and then you flip it up using your sense, you know, um, it was summoned last turn. Uh, you, you know, get to activate the sub terror monster's effect. Next, you have a uh, Subterror Behemoth Burrowing. Um, pretty much, it's just protection for your face down monsters against Subterrors. And it has a graveyard effect where you get to banish it to set Subterror monsters on the field. Uh, next, we have our Board Wipes. 
uh, Mirror Force and Torrential. Now, Mirror Force is just one of those cards that I'm running because um, it, I think, you know, it's like the safest Mirror Force to play at this point. Um, we haven't exactly gotten into a Link Monster based format yet, so you can still play stuff like Quaking. But, you know, in case you end up run, running uh, against that one Link deck, Mirror Force wouldn't be a bad option. And Torrential, there's going to be a lot of times where you don't have monsters on the field with this deck. So Torrential is just one of those cards where you're just like, okay, I wouldn't mind activating it now. Uh, just to, you know, get rid of my opponent's board. Or, you know, if you have monsters in hand and, you know, your opponent's going off, you can just be like, okay, stop right there. Lastly, we have the Solemn Brigade, Stronger Than Ever, Triple Solemn Strike, all three of them from the new Circuit Break Special Edition and that one Psalm Warning. So that's gonna do it all for the main deck. Going into the extra and side deck now. Boom. You saw a Camion right there. And Camion's there for good reason. So Deco Talker, as I said before, you can uh, replace it with the Subterra Link monster when it comes out. Mrs. Radiant, um, you're gonna make a lot of, you have a lot of Earth monsters, so you know, Mrs. Radiant is gonna be the Link monster that you make the most, if you make it at all. Um, because there's a lot of times where you're gonna want to keep your monsters on board, so Mrs. Radiant may not always be a good option. So Tornado, Spell and Shock Card Removal, um, it's pretty good. Uh, Castell, just card removal in general. Abyss Dweller, it could be real strong against the meta, so, you know, yeah, just take note of that. Uh, Super Dreadnought, Rogue Cannon, Gustav Max, I think Stogmo is level 10, so uh, if you Soul Charge in into two of those, then you know you get to go into this and um, inflict free damage. So next off, we have Coral Dragon. So the Invoked Fusion that you play is level 5 and you are playing Glow Up Bulb. So if you go into Coral Dragon, you get to pop cards on your opponent's board. And then if you have a, uh, a Fiendus that you don't think that you need, you can... Since Coral Dragon is a tuner, you can go uh, Phoenix and Coral Dragon to Synchro Summon your Ancient Fairy. I know Ancient Fairy is a card that's uh, been going up in hype and price recently because, you know, um, it pops field spells and it searches field spells and it special summons monsters from your hand as well. So it's a real solid card. Um, it does, it's a good counter against set rotation because set rotation forces um, both. Uh, field spells to be set on the field. So if you Ancient Fairy, you pop both and then you search your own. Uh, XX Saber Gotham's, uh, your, what, what is it? your Phosphoro Glacier is level 8. And so if you combo that with Glow Bulb, you get into a level 9 Synchro where you know you get to tribute it if you want to drop your opponent's card from hand or you can just have a 31 hitter on board. Next off, you have our level 5 Synchros. Um, high speed road Chambaro and Nature Beast. This helps with OTKs. Um, you know, <laughs> believe it or not, Subterras can OTK. And Nature Beast is like if you want to, if you know your opponent's playing a lot of spell cards, if you're playing like some like Pendulum Magician or you know, just a deck that relies a lot on spell cards like uh, maybe Spiral, you know, somebody out Nature Beast first or second turn wouldn't be a bad option. Lastly, um, as I said before, I don't have the Invoked Fusion. So two copies of the Invoked Fusion right here, the level five win one. Um, it has a quick effect where it puts itself face down into face down defense mission, um, or put any monster on the field into face down defense mission uh, once per turn during either player's turn. So you use that um, the first time to use it to set itself, to protect itself. And then after that, you use it on your opponent's monsters to, in to, to inconvenient them and to uh you know only make uh your plays stronger because you know you're limiting your opponent's plays and uh because of stuff like subterra cave clash there's going to be more set monsters on the field so it's going to be pretty good and then you know after you summon him if you have a fiendus on your field you can just set him and then um you know it's like sub fiendus would activate and then she would set the subterra behemoth so fiendus would still be face up on the field and um you know, so that means that if you fl if you have a hidden city and you flip up that subterra behemoth, then you know your invoked fusion uh, would be a lot more useful in that regard on its first turn because on its first turn you're only going to use it to set itself. 
Unless you have something like a back to the front where you know you can bring it back. But other than that, you're going to use it to set itself. And lastly, the last two cards I have here um, are Cherry Targets. Um, this is like uh, 13 cards that we have here so far, like including these two fusions. So these last two, you can play Cherry Targets or you can play um, anything else that, you know, comes to mind uh, with this deck. I don't really think you need a lot of extra deck space in this deck. So, you know, Cherries would not definitely uh, ruin your um, deck or, you know, the way your deck plays. Especially since you're you're pretty much always going to have less monsters than your opponent. So cherries would not be a bad option in that regard as well. So lastly, we're going into the side deck. We have two Camion. Uh, Camion just... Um, he's here because he's just a level 10 earth monster. Um, you know, Zafion is also a good one as well. But I just like Camion better just because, you know, if you know him, summon him... Uh, he gets to shuffle back any card into the deck at the end of the battle phase when he attacks. And also, your opponent cannot activate any cards or effects in response to his effect. So, if your opponent has something like a Crystal Wing, you summon him, attack into that Crystal Wing. Uh, end of the battle phase comes, they can't Crystal Wing you, they can't Solemn Strike you, they can't do anything to you um, when his effect activates. So you're going back into the deck, and that monster is also getting shuffled as well. So I think it's a real solid card if you don't have um, Zafions and you just have some extra Battles of Legend stuff. Camion is also a real good option. Next, we have uh, DD Crows. DD Crows are going to be real strong once uh, Spiral starts to take over, um, you know, banishing their uh, quick fixes and, you know, uh, Super Agents from Grave or um, even. Uh, against ABCs banishing their crucial pieces before they have a chance to banish it themselves um, does actually hinder them a lot. Next is Retaliating C, another card that's going to be good against uh, Spirals as well, just because um, it kind of like if they machine dupe first turn, uh, you special summon out Retaliating C, and now they're going to be scared to go into the Link monsters because all their cards would go to the would get banished instead of going to the graveyard, so they wouldn't be able to recycle it as well. So it kind of hinders their combos. Um, Twin Twisters, these are in the side because, you know, not every deck plays back row these days. I was playing Blue Eyes the other day, and Twin Twisters was not needed, like, at all. So, you know, you can main deck it if you feel like you're going to play a lot of decks in your in your local scene um, that play back row. But, um, you know, I think it's just better off in the, in the side deck. Um... One subterra behemoth burrowing. If you feel like you're playing a deck like True Dracos, where you know they have a lot of cards that like target um, your face down monsters to like get rid of them, you can play another copy of it just to make sure that your monsters stay right where they are. And lastly, we have triple unending nightmare um, for pendulum magicians because uh, the trap card is so annoying <laughs> and um, it's just crazy how much it can do. For the deck so you know like just getting rid of it as soon as possible is always a plus also um, getting rid of the spell card that helps them search as well is always a good thing so it just it, it just does a lot for the deck also if your opponent has like uh, scales that you know that don't have effects when they get destroyed like oaf dragon wisdom eye um, you know like the clear wing one uh, this also helps just get rid of those monsters from the field as well um, just to make sure that those um, don't help. just just to make sure that they can't set up a good scale, you know. So yeah, um, this is this was these were only thirteen cards. The last two cards would be the two the, the two uh, Ghost Reaper and Winter Cherries that you would be playing, um, since you know you have the Cherry targets in the uh, side deck. You can also play Artifact Lantia to stop your cards from getting banished, but you know it's all up to your own preference. So um, you can you can actually play another Umashrix in the deck. Um, Umashrix is just one of those cards that just helps you banish. And if you know your first one gets hit hard, then you know you kind of want to have a second one around. But you know, um, it's not something that's needed at two. But I do think you can just play it at two if you uh, feel like you need more uh, Subterra Behemoths in your deck. Another thing you can play is Pot of Desires. Uh, if you feel like you need more draw power, this deck has a lot of cards that are just like okay, like you don't really need them. It doesn't have a lot of combo pieces, and when you have a deck like that, Pot of Desires is always a solid card to play. 
Um, it just helps for draw power, and it doesn't really hinder the deck itself too much, just because the deck has like a lot of cards where it doesn't really need them in every single duel. And the last card is going to be a card from Circuit Break, or uh, you know, struggling battle because first turn you're not going to have um, a lot of cards on your side of the field, so you know you can like wait it out. You're not really going to want to attack first turn anyway. So if you wait out until the battle phase, activate Struggling Battle, force him to banish everything except one card, and then go into main phase two and then set all your stuff, it can be a pretty solid way to uh, play the game. So when Circuit Break comes out in like a week and a half, uh, Struggling Battle can be a real good card for the deck. Also, uh, Destrudo is going to be like a staple. If you don't know who uh, Destrudo is, I'll do another video about him in the coming week. Just to give people a reminder of how broken, of how absolutely broken that card is. But when Circuit Break comes out, those are going to be the two cards you're going to want to add, um, including the Subterra Link Monster. So Destrudo, Subterra Link Monster, and uh, maybe Struggling Battle if you feel like you can play it. But uh, yeah, I guess it's really all for now. Um, this was my version of Subterras for, uh, I guess you could say post Circuit Break, um, because I'm proxying a lot of these cards. Um, so, yeah, um, hope you guys enjoyed. This was Nisha here. See you guys in the next one. Peace out. Light it up the world with a